Hello everybody and welcome back to our ResinCon playthrough in the EU4 Ambon Armand. Last episode was sort of a chill episode where we were just hanging out, making money, and trying to get through the mission tree so we can get buffed up. And also build up our military as well. Oh nice, immediately a rebellion. Gotta love it. <laughs> yeah, we gotta start turning up maintenance because we are going to go to war soon yet again. Let's see, yeah, our, our people are getting discovered. There's not really anything we can colonize at the moment, sadly. Actually, at all. So I guess I'll just go around and sort by dev cost. Yeah, let's just put you here. And I might just slot the colonists in the capital. Because it is just 5% no matter what, so... It'll be hilarious if we get some free dev on a 205 cost dev province. Let's keep let's keep these conversions going. And I think I am just gonna fire an event through the console to make it so we can do this mission. I know it's kinda cheesy, but we literally are a 646, so the game fucked us. And I want to just get this special mission to fire off, because I don't think we'll ever really have a chance to do it. Which I'm worried about. Oof, that's expensive. Just doing this to get some of that delicious absolutism. But yeah, if we don't do it now, and our guy dies, then, you know, I don't think we'll ever be able to do it. That's what I'm worried about. Seems like everybody is leaving the coalition, too. So actually, that, that might give us a chance to deck on somebody. And I think it might be a Lauren Carr. He is allied to a lot of people, and I could do the subjugation CB, but I don't really see a point. Because even with a Lauren Carr, it, he's too big. He's too much of a big boy. Might go for a Tursen. Or I might just go through the mission files myself and change this to also allow subject provinces, because it just, as I said in the last episode, it's kind of contradictory. Like, it doesn't make any sense to subjugate if it just slows us down even more. And we are on a time limit here. So, that's what I'm worried about. Fuck, I forgot Dharma's needs a temple. Let's get that. Hopefully we can finish that before the agenda runs out. About three years. So glad they don't make it like a year before it dies. Since we're not going to do any more of these provinces, we might as well dev these guys up and get some more manpower. Or elf power, I guess. Ooh, gloss just got even better. Improvements in lens making. Do we even have any glass? Probably not. We had it is a new world, so it's a lot of raw goods like sugar and naval supplies because of all the wood. You know, slaves, but you know. Eh. Honestly, I might just change all the slave provinces with our one thing here, but I would need to state that, so never mind. And I would also like to dev this up too. Yeah, let's let's state it. It's whatever. And get this up to 20, so we can make it into our port. Because I remember that being a mission here. Yes. Northern Logistics Base. In order to prepare for our great expedition, we need an advanced logistics base at the very doors of the Ruined Sea. And honestly, this looked like the perfect province. The second one I was thinking of is this like little point here. It looks like a nice port. But this is good as well, like right in the middle. It gives us 5 manpower and 2 base tax in this province, along with local goods produced increased, and it will now make naval supplies, which will replace the now shitty coffee that's here. Because coffee got nuked. Because people found out it's bad for you. But yeah, that's going to help us out. Not a bad province, 27 dev. Let's see what's next. We're just saving up money to get the leaves path here. So we can move into Amadia and continue destroying these 
Duranians that don't belong here at all. Also get some more generals. See, so you moved over here. I'm pretty sure I can declare on the trade company now, but... For some reason, Laurent loves to cock block me. I don't know why. Yeah, I wouldn't blame him, but... Jeez, man. Let's get you here, get you here. Nice, finish that off. I'm not going to take the next tech. I'm actually going to finish off trade ideas, because it would lead us to finishing our all of our traditions here and stuff like that. It gives us more merchants, gives us more trade steering and caravan power, even though I don't even think we have any caravans. No, it's all sea trade so far. Like, this would help that, but we already have 54% of the power. So let's just take these. We just need to use our Diplo for the last one. Which won't take that long. And now that we have 2,000 crowns, we can now take the next mission, which is the Leaves Path. Our territory is vast, and all of our provinces are connected by a thick labyrinth of foil foliage and tree, greatly slowing the progress of our armies and our trade. We must remedy that in the absolute. So for 100 admin, 2,000 crowns, and even more elvish, elvish power, <laughs> we do get prestige and admin again. I'm assuming that's a stability increase. Oh, that kind of sucks. Basically, we just lose half an... Half of our admin stuff. Okay. I mean, this makes sense, though, because a lot of our territory is a jungle, as you can see. All this light, kind of pukish green is all jungle. I'd say about, like, maybe half of the eastern, I guess, FLI over here is all jungle. So hopefully this helps out a little bit. And it gives us claims on, I'm pretty sure, territory we already own couple of provinces here in Amadia. So we get the Leaves Path, and now that a new road pierces the thick jungles of Ephali, we can ensure the safe passage of our armies and commerce throughout the region. The Jungle Tamed. So the South Ephali region gets the Leaves Path until the end of the game, giving the following effects. Friendly movement speed plus 25%. You know what? That's actually pretty decent. It's like the heart of our territory here, so it's like a, a jungle highway, if you would. I don't know how much jungle slows down movement. I wish it would tell you, like in like Victoria and Mayo and Texas, but hey, it's it's somewhat of an increase. I'll take it. And it does help us move down to our next mission here, the Amadia Way. Populated jungle and a wide deserty plateau, the Amadian Range is allegedly home to many mountains rich in silver. Gives us a claim in that entire region, all the way over here. Kind of weird how it cuts this off. What region are you? West FLI? Eh, that's fine. I guess I should just move troops down to take out Doranic Amadia then. Does it make sense? It's got a bunch of claims on some people. The Vanbury Guild, which is another fun new world-ish kind of adventure place if you really want to try it. You have to start as Telgir over here in the, I guess, old, new, new old world. <laughs> it's very confusing. Yeah, you start as Telgir, and at about 1500 or so, you can get an event so you can do the Vanbury Guild. And it's pretty nice. It has its own little mission tree. I saw it when I first started playing this mod, so it's actually not that bad. Can take admin. Hmm. How much is it? 676 is pretty expensive. Hmm. Let's see. Institution's gonna take a ton of money. We are rooting out corruption, which is taking a lot of money as well. Hmm. I think I'll just wait on it for now. Or, you know, I'll just take it. Yeah, I'll just take it so we can get our next idea group. And I want it to be military-focused. I wouldn't usually go offensive, but 
quality would be amazing as well. Especially if we're going trade, so we can stack that trade efficiency with the goods produce modifier we're about to get soon. Don't really know if offensive has anything cool. Uh, trade efficiency. 10% movement speed is actually pretty nice as well. And economic, once we get that, we can get combat ability. Hmm. More force limit would be good as well. I mean, I think more movement speed would be amazing. I was thinking of doing economic next as well, but... Hmm. We're just so far behind on admin tech right now. I mean, even like administration ideas too. We're ahead on military. And we're going to be using admin to core. I don't know. It's We could go like, there's so many ways to go here. Obviously, Diplo is out of the question. Maybe influence later on once we start subjugating all the natives. But I think I'll just go offensive, just like usual. I won't take it just yet. Just in case I can get some wisdom in the comments, because there is so many paths we can take. Not really sure what to do. But I do know one thing, and that's to declare war on Doronic Madia. Let's go for Omu Nalir. We can't declare war on Kara Lafquin. Oh, I was looking at the wrong one. Nice. Let's just split you up. Not going to be that crazy of a war, anyways. Your capital's right there. No, we don't need any DTC officers. I like how it localizes that, though, for the country. There's another colonist gone, so we're just going to stick him in Jaherdan. See if he can improve the dev there. Save us about 220 points every single time. Good for us. Yeah, I am focusing admin like a madman. Because we're going to need it. We're also going to need to save up money to build forts everywhere, because I hate this. Oh, you're so ruined. What am I thinking? I, was, I kept wondering why the hell I couldn't move through there. Yeah, we're gonna have to declare war on you as well. Let me uh, turn this off real quick. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that to come up. Alright, there we go. Let's keep moving. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to go to the end of my territory and start sieging it like an ass. I mean, what else can you do? It's kind of like guerrilla warfare in the jungles of FLI. Which makes me, which makes me think, is this entire continent FLI? I know obviously this is East FLI, West FLI, but this is like Alicand. Or do you just call this Southern Alentir? I don't really know. I mean, it would be obviously really boring if you just called it, like, West FLI, East, North, and South, and then just didn't have any other names, but... Let's catch this bastard. Yeah, it's pretty much an easy war, though. Just like usual. Boom. Let's get moving over here. Doronic Soruin. Let's go for... I Igaru now. Let's go. Catch him, get Jahalor the Mighty, because he has siege, and we're going to go for their capital. Not to bed. Let's get you moved down here. Siege that. Yeah, we're still just mopping up these silly humans over here. Wait, jewelry. This is just gems. It's gold. Hey, I'll take it. Two more dev on a gold province is really good. Yeah, just gave us like another ducat and a half. Crown. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, we do have all of our embargoes on Laurent and everybody else. I mean, who else are we even rival to? Just those two for now.
That's fine. Let's go to her here. Yeah, the AI doesn't know what they're doing like usual, so. We're just gonna take these guys out to a nice dinner. Boom, just like that. No overextension, only 16 piece. Eh, chump change, but it's fine. It's something. There goes that capital as well. And it is gonna be kind of dumb, but I might just take most of this. Even though it's gonna hurt our Diplo. You know, I might actually not do that. But other than that, we can now finish off trade ideas. Get the caravan power. Get our next thing here. A uh, righteous overlord. Many criticize us for our methods, accusing us of cruelties far greater than what is actually perter uh, perpetrated. Yeah, Cortezel did nothing wrong. What they failed to grasp was that no measure is too extreme to stamp out the plague of unbelief. Shirking our sacred duty of all but confines these misbegotten souls into the ever-hungering maw of the great darkness. However, as our critics so often fail to see, those who willingly embrace our truth are treated with the utmost respect and care. These state wards afforded a status far in excess to what they would receive otherwise. Ours is a truly enlightened empire, for we are the only ones who govern according to a transcendental principle. The need to herald the return of our good to bring about the cleansing of this world. I love it. Diplomatic relations plus two and 25% for subject development. Nice. And finishing that off gives us 5% more discipline, which is even more amazing. And then here's the real kicker. We can also get this goods produce modifier. Might even go all the way and take... This as well, to help with trade steering and efficiency. You know, screw it, why not? That's gonna hurt our Diplo, I might take that off of that. And just like that, production goes from 41.51, 48.39, and our trade increased as well. So now we're making Buku crowns, which is what we need to keep our conquests going. Perfect, and you know what? I might just fire off the event so we can go down this. A crown to govern them all. So it's event 700, which is the election event, so you can get one of every power. But since we're 646, it's only going to 656. You know, this might be bad for some people, but I just want to show you guys how it goes. So we can do that. Do you give us... There you go. I'll take away the power it gave us, so it's 50 mil power. And there we go, a crown to govern them all. As the supreme leader of our nation, it is important for the central seat of our power to differentiate its status from all other inhabitants of the kingdom. And what better for that than to forge a queen crown to assert the divine power of the king of kings. So we get 50 admin and the enlightened elven empire happens. As the realm continues to grow, it is finally time for us to dedicate our government and ensure that our leader represents the highest holy authority within the empire enlighten the empire so this is why i wanted to do this before we died because it changes us to a theocracy we get changed to an empire which we are and we become uh resonance war enact enlightened elven empire government reform so alarian resonance war the first the sanctified emperor in our government we're gonna have to go through all that real quick Enlightened Elven Empire. A theocratic empire ruled by one who derives his divine right to rule by Surreal himself. Chosen to spread his light across all the peoples of Aelantir. So this just shows that we're supposed to accept people, but just convert them, because we get max promoted cultures, institution spread, and true faith. Admin deficiency plus 5% more, which is incredible, and 10 more max absolutism. Perfect all around. We might as well go through this as well. I guess tolerance of the true faith would make sense. Yeah, we're not really colonizing anymore. So let's do that. Would like expulsion of her uh, heathens. Yeah, yeah, our military is good enough. Let's just take that. We'll take subservient bureaucrats to help with our corruption. We don't really need the yearly absolutism that much. Yeah, I'd rather just keep the partial secularization for now. Kind of doesn't make sense in the lore of things. 
Yeah, you know what? That was a mistake. <laughs> Lore-wise, this makes more sense, even though this is better in the long run. And then now we need an heir in Resincon for the Sanctified Emperor Alarian I. Talented theologian. Yeah, let's go for the theologian. Not really the most talented, but let's see. A Talarian, 241, an heir to the throne. 35 years old, immortal. Sounds like me in real life. Nah, no, not even close. Just like that, we're now an enlightened elven empire. Oh, nice. Alarion is apparently a babbling buffoon. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, there's also more stuff we can go down here as well. We can go for military reforms, or... We need to forge Dazenair and Razan Duzel. I don't even know what the hell that means. What is Razan Duzel? What is that? I guess it gives us like a sword or something? Like in Adenica? Where the hell is Razan Duzel though? It's gotta be a, uh, a changed name kind of province. Don't really know. It's gonna make everybody hate us, but it's fine. We actually can do the war against evil CB against Marleond over here. Can't even see their capital. Huh. Oh, you're all the way over there? Okay. Alright, let's get you uh, securing this area and... Oh, there we go. Damn, they colonized from all the way up there? You're crazy. What does the CB do anyways? I forget. Oh. Kind of like a liberation CB or something. But we do have conquests against them. What am I thinking here? Oh, it's all the way down there. That's fine. We'll get the stack down there. Get our fleet going. I think we might just full annex this guy. Yeah, it hurts our Diplo a ton, but hey. That's fine. A little bit of negative Diplo never hurt anybody. Walk in there. Oh, there goes another colony done. Larian Car just joined the coalition again. Because everybody hates us. Yeah, they just got above the threshold. That's fine. Just like that, it is over. Ooh. Rapid development due to humans. You know what? Yeah, you know what? These humies aren't that bad. Let's keep them. Not gonna shell out a ton of cash for him, but hey, if you give me free dev, I will take it. Yeah, look at that. We're making so much money, though. Let's finish this off. Take all your money. We are gonna be negative a tiny bit, but that's fine. More people are gonna hate us, but, you know, it's the usual. Just like that, Resincon gets even bigger. Boom. Don't have enough to core all of it, but that's fine. And look at that. Juicy zero overextension. <laughs> it's perfect. Well, that amazing conquest on the west here, I think is a good point to end this episode on. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.